Well, good evening and welcome to another Wednesday's Word. We're glad that you're tuning in. Pray that all is well with you and your family and all is going well. We continue to lift you up and pray and um, trust God that he's meeting your needs. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a passage in Isaiah 43. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to that chapter. We'll be mainly looking at about, about two or three verses in that chapter mainly. Uh, to be able to focus in on what I want to uh, bring to you today. If you look at the background of, of that chapter, it, or even what's been happening, is Israel has uh, committed uh, idolatry, and because of that idolatry, they've been in Babylonian captivity. You know, and if you look at idolatry, and a lot of us think, well, I'm not in idolatry. I don't have a stone statue that I bow down to. I don't have a totem pole in my backyard that I worship or, you know, I don't have other gods, but really those other gods can, can be just ourself and, and what we want above what God wants. I, I believe the, the foundation of what idolatry is, is really not taking God seriously. Uh, yeah, it, it formulates in the sense of, you know, not putting God first place, not giving God his rightful place, worshiping things because of their priorities more than God. But it all boils down or even uh, the sins we hang on to and not give to the Lord, you know, and wanting that sin more than we want God. Uh, so idolatry can, can portray itself in a lot of different ways, but it, I believe it all boils down is just people not taking God seriously and, and going their own way. And so they went in idolatry and worshiping other gods. Now they've been in captivity in Babylon, and now they've been freed. God's freed them, and now they're on their way back through the desert, back to their homeland. And so that's the, that's the setting here in this uh, chapter uh, 43. Uh, the two verses I really want to focus in on is Isaiah 43, 18, and 19. So if you have your Bible, uh, turn to that passage there, and I'll read it. It says, Do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. And so he's setting their perspective. Uh, we're going to break this down in really two parts. It's basically don't focus on the past. Focus on the present and the future. So he's wanting to get their, their vision uh, the right way. Uh, I came across this a while, years ago. It actually came out in the 1800s on a postcard. And so I'd like to ask you a question here. Uh, do you see the woman in the picture? Well, then the second question is, do you see an elderly woman? Or do you see a very young woman? Well, if you saw the older elderly woman, then this you'll see it as her nose, and this was her mouth, and this was her chin. But some see the younger woman where this is her necklace, and this is her chin, and this is her nose right here, and she's looking away from you. And so that's the young woman in the picture. That's the same picture, but some people, when they see it, their perspective, they see the elderly woman, and some people see it, and they see the younger woman looking away. And so that's how life is. Some people can be in the exact same circumstance, the exact same situation, and they see it totally different than the other person. It's our perspective. It's the way we look at things. You know, uh, Adrian Rogers once said, wisdom is looking at life from God's point of view. I thought that was an excellent way to put it. Wisdom is looking at life from God's point of view. How's our vision? You know, it's not ironic that this year is the year 2020, which means perfect vision. And so is our spiritual vision 2020? Are we looking at things in our situation with the right kind of perspective and vision? And so we'll look at that here in this passage. So let's break this down. So the first part is let's don't focus on the past. When he says, do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Does he mean never think about the past? Never look at the past? No, I don't believe he's saying that. 
because we do. We, we're able to thank God because we look at the past and where God's brought us. We, we look back at our salvation and we thank the Lord. We look back at uh, things he's rescued us from and delivered us from and, and all those things and they cause us to praise the Lord. But we can't continue to look at the past in several aspects. Uh, I believe uh, he didn't want them to look at, at past exodus like the children of Israel. They, were, they left uh, Egypt. Uh, and they left Egypt through the wilderness. Uh, but that was the old way, and he's wanting them to look at something uh, today, not at the past, but what's going on now. Because our past can, can not be something good to focus in on two parts. One is just our past accomplishments. or you know, We can say, well, I used to do this for the Lord, but what are we doing for the Lord now? Uh, or that is what I uh, was able to do, do and I praise the Lord for, but what are you able to do and praise the Lord for today? We, we've got we to gotta press on, not just live in the, in the past. You know, also there's things we've got to put out, put behind us in the past, and that's our past failures and sins. And, you know, we can live in shoulda, coulda, woulda, but living in shoulda, coulda, woulda kind of puts us in bondage. We've got to move forward, yes, our past, we can look and just bemoan it and say, man, I messed up and I'll never be anything. But, hey, that, that's not the Lord's viewpoint. He, if we ask him to forgive us and cleanse us, you know, then we can press on and, and, and move forward. You know, if he has chosen to forget my sins, then I should do that as well. He chooses not to remember them, and so I should choose not to remember them and move forward in life. And uh, so many people I see, they're able, they're, they don't put their past behind, and by not putting their past behind, it messes up their present, which messes up their future. We've got to have the right vision. We've got to not ponder and be able to look completely at the past. Even Paul made that clear in Philippians 3.13. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do. Well, Paul saying, but one thing I do ought to get our attention, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. You see, that's the same principle right there. We have to, hey, that's the past. I'm living today and in the future. It's a new day. And so that brings us to our second point, which is to focus not on the past, but to focus on what God's doing now and in the future. And listen to what he says in verse 19. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. What's God doing now? You know, it says a new thing. Yes, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're not saying that. It's, it's not saying that. But, but God does things, some new things, you know. He only spoke once through the burning bush. We shouldn't just be looking for a burning bush. God speaks in, in various ways and, and does various events. So we just can't say that he's always going to speak through a burning bush. He's always the same, but these things that happen, these events, he's going to do a new thing. He's doing a new thing in your life. Uh, look around it. Uh, boy, it even says here, will you not be aware of it? You know, we've got to be aware of what God's doing in our life uh, and, and, and to see what he's doing because we can easily get blinded to that. You know, I started wearing prescription glasses a few years back and, and what I found out was uh, I'd wear them for a while and then Rebecca said, man, your glasses are awful dirty. Well, I couldn't see them on my face that they were dirty, but I'd take them off and look in the light and see, man, those are extremely dirty. In other words, somebody else could see it and then when I took it off and looked at it in the light, which would be the light of the Word of God, and I looked in the glass, I could see how dirty it was. And I'd take a, a cleaner and, and, and wipe them down and then put them back on and think, man, look what I've been missing. This is real clear. But what I had done was allowed those to gradually uh, take my vision and make it less and less and less. It was so gradual that I didn't really know that my lenses were dirty. That's how it happens in, in our life. We can lose perspective from God's point of view of what we're going through 
But boy, when we get our lenses clear and see things from God's perspective and see the new thing he's doing in our life and, and changing our life and using good or bad circumstances to do things in our life, boy, it makes all the difference. You know, I think it was Charles Stanley who uh, I'd read that he was saying that one of the tragedies of going through a tragedy is that you go through the tragedy and you don't allow God to do what he wants to do in your life by taking you and allowing you to go through it and getting you through it. And I begin to think, well, that, that's so true, that sometimes we rush through a difficult situation and God's wanting to do something in our life, something new, change, change us from the inside out in some way maybe that we need to change and, and we get through that tragedy and get through that circumstance. We may th thank him for it, but he didn't, what we didn't allow him to do in our life and make us more like Christ and change something that he was really wanting to change. And, and that is a tragedy. You, you see in that passage that we wrote, it said he'll make a roadway in the wilderness. You see, sometimes maybe he doesn't get us out of the wilderness. He was taking the children of Israel through a wilderness. Sometimes our wilderness journey is there. And yes, we may be praying, Lord, get me out of the wilderness journey. But did you see what he said? I'll make a roadway in the wilderness. He may not get us out of it right now, but he will, if we look, find that roadway. And then it says, and rivers in the desert. And again, we, we know the context there has to do a lot with the millennial rain and, and all that. But it also had to do with what these children of Israel were doing right at that present moment that they were going to have rivers in the desert. Roadways and rivers. I believe the roadway is the direction God will give us. And the rivers are the provision that God will give us. Because what do you need in the desert? You need rivers, so you need water. And what else do you need in the wilderness and desert? You need a roadway. You need to know where you're going, where you're headed, the direction you need to go. And he provides both of those. If we see them, it says there, are you aware? Do we see the roadway that God's given, the direction? Maybe he's wanting you to make a left turn or a right turn. Uh, maybe he wants you to go take care of a situation or make things right with somebody or whatever the direction he's given you, go that direction. And in that direction, down that roadway, you'll see the rivers in the desert. Maybe our wilderness goes a longer way than what we want. Maybe our desert goes a long, longer way than we want, but if we're going on his roadway, on his direction, we'll see those rivers, the provision, the, the, the nourishment, that water that we long for when we're in the desert, because that's about all that's on our mind when you're in the desert, is something to drink, and God provides that. He wants our focus to be on him and not on us. You know, there was a song once. No, I'm not, I'm not going to sing it, so you can rest on that. So. But it had to do with the verbiage was basically, Lord, change or change me. I thought that was an interesting way to put it. Lord, change, meaning the situation, or change me. Now, those are the two things that we would look at. Now, obviously, many of us pray first, Lord, change this situation. But Lord, if you don't, on this wilderness journey, on this desert journey, then change me. Do in me what you want to do in me. Not my will, but yours be done. Because we all go through wilderness journeys. We all through, go through desert journeys. But if we look around, have the right perspective, not looking at the past, it's already the past. Can't do anything about it anyway. But looking on what he's doing now, new, in our wilderness journey, in our desert journey, that we need to be aware of it. And we need to find out what he's doing. And not only find out what he's doing, allow that change to happen in our life. You know, that chapter started out, Isaiah 43, 1. And let me read that verse that the whole chapter started with. We focused on 18 and 19, but look what verse 1 says. Do not fear. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. I've 
called you by name, and you are mine. For the God who created the universe to call me and you by name, he knows us that personally, and to tell us that we're his. You know, you have children and part of knowing that they're yours and what that means to, to them and to you, that uh, you have that relationship. And for God to know us by name and to remind us that we belong to him. Well, that's assuring. That's obviously why he would say, don't fear. You don't have to fear. I know you by name. You're mine. And then later on to say, I'm going to make you a roadway in the wilderness. I'm going to give you rivers in the desert. I'm going to take care of you. He takes care of us. And so even when we go through these moments in time, Continue to not look at the past. Look at what he's doing now. Allow him to make those changes. And remember, we don't have to fear. Why? Because he knows us by name. And we're his. We belong to him. You know, you always talk about, you hear about the mama bear. You know, you never want to upset the mama bear because she's going to do all that she can in her might to protect that little cub. You see, God doesn't have any, any limitations like that mama bear does. He has all power in his hands to take care of those that are his. And so I'd ask you, maybe even today, that if you've never become his, that you take this opportunity to surrender your life to Christ as well. That you would just surrender all and say, Lord, uh, I know that I'm a sinner and that I want to receive you as my Lord and my Savior. We know we can't save ourselves. Uh, we need Christ Christ died on the cross for our sins to pay our sin debt. And that's our only way, our, our only hope for heaven, our only hope for forgiveness of our sin is to surrender our life to Christ and then establish that relationship with him to where we can say we're his and he's ours. He's our savior. Uh, we're his child and we can count on him. We don't have to fear. We can rely on him. And if you already know Christ, for those of us that know Christ, we continue to focus on what the Lord has done. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for being our Savior, our Lord, our Redeemer, God, but also our provider, uh, our director in the desert. Lord, as we don't focus on the past, we focus on the future and all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, we look forward to seeing everybody real soon as you've uh, got in the newsletter about the latter part of May. We're trying to possibly look at uh, a May 24th reopening. Uh, that all happens. Uh, we're looking forward to it happening. We'll let you know the exact date that we will, but uh, we sure are looking forward to that day. And so uh, continue to reach out to each other, continue to minister to one another, uh, continue to love on each other like you, you've been doing. Uh, we continue to do our online services and try to reach out uh, the best we can to minister to people's needs. So continue to uh, love those around you and love the flock. Uh, I love you, uh, pray for you, and look forward to seeing you very, very soon again in person. God bless you.